All right, what's going on everybody? I had a couple of you guys ask for a disc comparison video. So we're gonna do that today with three discs, uh, fairway drivers around the same flight numbers. Uh, I wanna explain to you why the flight numbers are a baseline, but at the same time, they mean almost nothing in the long run. And then I also want to explain why you might not understand the way the flight numbers are because there's a lot of variables that go into it and skill level is a big one. Uh, before we start drinking Yingling until somebody pays me not to, uh, we started a Patreon. It's three dollars a month. I want to keep it cheap, but if you're part of the Patreon, if you sign up this week, uh, I will put you on a list guaranteed to get on a game show episode. Um, so go to the Patreon, three dollars a month. Our sponsors are Spin City and Triple Seven Customs, and let's get into it. So first one we're gonna go with is the F5 from Prodigy. Uh, it's a 7, 5, negative 2, 1. And this has actually become one of my favorite discs uh, for my skill level. I throw it on about a 25, maybe a 20 degree hyzer, and it'll flip up, and it'll turn just a little bit, not a whole lot, holds pretty straight for about 260. Uh, like I said, I don't, I don't throw bombers, and so about 260, and then it kind of dies out at the end. But I don't get a whole lot of fade. Uh, it actually maybe gets like a foot or two and then whatever ground play I get. Not a very aggressive disc. Pretty just up and in. Uh, and that's how that flies. And I just, I've fallen in love with it. Um, now, our next one is going to be the Leopard 3, the Glow, that just came out on Scoggins. And I've only had this for about a week and a half now. And it's actually a really good disc. Um... This one has a lot more glide though. I can get this one to about 310. Same thing, uh, a little bit of turn. I probably get an extra two to three feet turn out of it so I can get a f more of a flex shot. And then, look at barely any fade at the end. Maybe maybe six feet, six feet of fade. Not a whole lot. Um, and then not much ground play if I get the full distance flight. Uh, now, if I come up short, you're going to get, you know, about 10 to 15 feet of ground play, but nothing crazy. So they fly pretty similar, except for this one has the same flight numbers, 7, 5, negative 2, 1, but I get, a, seems like a lot more glide out of it. Now, this is also glow plastic, so that probably has a lot to do with it. And then our last one, also a Nova, uh, this is an It, and this is... Similar flight numbers as well, but this is a 7, 6, negative 2, 1. So just a little bit extra glide. Now the first time I threw this disc, I thought somebody was playing a fucking joke on me. There was no wind. It was completely dry out. I threw this thing, and it flipped up, and it turned over so quick. So I threw it again. I threw it again. I probably put it on like a 35 degree hyzer. It flipped up. Flipped over again. This is the flippiest disc I've ever thrown. Same. Has the same flight numbers as these. Except for a little extra glide. This thing. The way it throws should be labeled. Like a 7. Probably a 7, 3, negative 4, 1. Based on the way I throw this disc. And. That's where I kind of want to get into it is. These are three different discs. Three different plastics. And. They all fly differently, but they all have the same flight numbers. And people always say, we should stay true, you know, trust flight numbers, trust flight numbers. The problem is, you can buy this Leopard, and I think they have three to four different plastics, probably more than that. Uh, and they all will come out with different flights because they're different plastics, but it keeps the same flight number. The flight number is just a base. And I don't know exactly why they don't change the flight numbers when they come out with different plastics when they know it's going to fly differently. I'm thinking it's just to prevent any confusion. So if you see a leopard with a different flight number, it doesn't mess with your head. I'm not sure. I really don't know. I can't explain that part at all. I'm just trying to figure it out for myself. Uh, but that is the case. Uh, same thing with Glow. This one's a Glow Leopard. Uh, and they do say the glows tend to be more stable or overstable. That's also what I've heard, but I've heard other people say some of them are more understable. Depends on what company, depends on what plastic, glow plastic it is. 
So you also have to remember that. If you're throwing glow, each company has different glow plastics that either glow longer or less, and it's going to affect the flight as well. So flight numbers are a baseline. And then the biggest thing with flight numbers... Oh, I'm out of breath. Let me take a beer. Sit. Biggest thing with flight numbers is it's basically more on a spectrum of how you throw in general anyway. So if you're a lower level player, you're fairly brand new, and they always say, you know, don't pick up the high speed discs. Well, let's say you do, and you throw it, and it, it's probably going to do exactly what the numbers say it should do uh, based on your skill level, but you can't get the disc out as far, so you're not going to like the flight. It's just going to be way too much for you. Same thing can happen though if you're someone who throws 500 feet and you're trying to rip a leopard. Like if I throw a leopard and somebody with the skill level throws the same disc, I might be able to get it to fly flat and straight. Somebody else is going to flip it over because they're putting too much speed on it. You need the finesse for the disc speed you have. Now, the better you get, the longer you play, you're obviously going to have the advantage of reading different flight numbers from different companies. They're all going to be different, and I really, a lot of people talk about it. Uh, Foundation Disc Golf talks about it a lot, and I hear about it on a Grip Lock podcast that they wish they came up with like a universal uh, flight number system or something outside of flight numbers, something that's more true to what the disc can do and if they can do it in levels based on your your skill level so they can do like a, what the disc will do if you're a beginner what the disc will do if you're intermediate what the disc will do if you're advanced something along those lines i think would make more sense in the long run but if you pick up discs and you just don't understand why they're not flying based on the flight numbers it's just it has strictly to do with your technique and your skill level it's not the disc it's you unfortunately but at the same time, three different discs, same flight numbers, three different results. So also keep that in mind. My best advice, if you're a brand new player, go to your local store. Don't buy a brand new disc for like the first six months, unless it makes you feel good. Obviously, if you have the money and you want to buy a brand new disc, I'm going to tell you not to. But if you want to play smart and you want to learn the most you can at early on, go to the used bin, buy different speeds, different stabilities, get overstable, understable, and just get yourself a wide range of used discs at $6 a piece. Instead of buying five discs for $20, losing two of them in the pond because you don't know what they do, and then you feel like you just wasted a bunch of money. Buy used when you're first playing. Like brand new, buy used. Like I, I, I swear to it. The discs don't fly any worse or better. Uh, over time, you do break a disc in, it, but it's so much better to learn how to use this than wasting your money buying new discs than you realize just end up in your garage uh, you'll end up with a pile similar to that one and it'll be just a bunch of plastic that you can overthrow again and you realize you made a mistake so that's the best advice I can give you uh, if you guys seen anything in this video that you think I got wrong Call me out in the comments. I'm not going to have my feelings hurt. I don't have a big ego. Uh, I'd actually rather just correct it because I want to get all the right information out. But I feel like for me being a mediocre player, this is the best way I can explain how it works to somebody who's just below me. Uh, sometimes when advanced players explain things, they know too much and it's too casual and easy to explain it to some of the beginner players. So uh, to any of you guys, thank you for following. Go sign up for our Patreon. We got YouTube. We got Facebook. Uh, enjoy your weekend.